is going to be the test with the uh, Benedict solution. So we're going to uh, get new samples of solutions B, C, and D. So there's new samples of B, C, and D. We'll also replace the G and the J. So these are just fresh samples of the substances that are still to be identified. And again, we're going to dissolve these in a small amount of water. Okay, so we know all of those are soluble. And now for this solution, we're going to add a little bit of Benedict solution. And when we add the Benedict solution, uh, you'll actually see no reaction occur right away. It dissolves and it makes kind of this blue solution, but they all look exactly the same, so that doesn't help us to identify it. What we need to do next is to heat the solutions. So we're going to light our Bunsen burner. light our Bunsen burner. And now we're going to heat each of these in our Bunsen burner and see if any changes occur. So we'll start with B. We're heating this in our Bunsen burner looking for color changes that may occur. don't really see any color change with solution B. Let's try the next one. So solution C, we'll heat this. Heating that. Some of it's starting to finish dissolving, but we don't really see any, uh, no color change, change occurring there with C. We'll try D. So we do have a reaction occurring here with D. So D, the solution is changing from blue to orange with heat. We'll check J. So we'll heat this one. Solution J as it's being heated. Uh, no color change occurs with J. G, no color change occurred with G either. So the only one that had a color change occur with the uh, Benedict solution and the heat was D. So solution D can be identified based on the results of this test. And we'll need to get new samples of B, C, J, and G in order to do further tests on these. So we'll set these aside. We'll get new samples of B and C. So there's a new sample of B, new sample of C. We'll replace J and G. There's a new sample of J. G, so we can do further tests on these. Uh, the next test is going to be uh, whether they whether they react with uh, vinegar. So we'll do the test with vinegar. We'll do it with G first. 
and we see that we do get a reaction with G reacting with vinegar. The other substances will not react with vinegar, but we definitely see bubbles forming, gas being produced when G reacts with vinegar. You'll get no reaction with the other three. Uh, to identify between the three remaining substances, we're going to see whether or not they are soluble in alcohol. So we'll, we're going to add isopropyl alcohol to these three substances. So we'll add approximately five milliliters of alcohol to each of these. And we'll see if they are soluble. So. B does not appear to be soluble in alcohol. You can see a lot of the solids still remaining down here at the bottom, not dissolving. C, if we stir that a little bit more, it is slowly dissolving in the alcohol. If we stir that around a little bit more, and wait a little bit longer, we'll see that C does in fact dissolve in the alcohol. And then J does not dissolve in the alcohol either. So we've identified C based on the fact that it dissolved in alcohol. So we can set that aside. And now we just have two solids remaining, uh, B and J. And we need to uh, figure out which one of these uh, is which by seeing which one will melt, or speak, by seeing a difference in melting point. So we're going to light our Bunsen burners again. We'll get new samples of substance B and substance J. Set these aside. And we'll light our Bunsen burner and then we'll heat these substances and see if either of them, and we'll see which one has a lower melting point. So here's substance B being heated. See a little bit of moisture being removed from the substance that was with the test tube. Uh, but so far, no reactions occurring to the to the substance. Let's try J. Do the same test. We're going to heat it. See a little bit of excess excess moisture. I can already have kind of a, a sweet smell actually coming off of this one. We'll heat a little bit more, and you can see right now that it's starting to melt. You see also a color change, that caramel color, and that'll help us to identify substance J. It melted, where substance B not melt. Alright, so that's all the information you need in order to identify the 11 unknowns.